Uh, Eric, probably just a quick note to remind that uh, they may be interested also in, in a parallel conversation uh, in the context of the carrier industry. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, just, just, yes, if you want to mention that. Absolutely, yeah, I will, we'll get into that a little bit in the agenda, but definitely Altron, I think, would, Altron would be very interested in the carrier interest group. Um, I need to share my screen. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. All right, well, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, as a reminder, uh, this meeting is recorded. Uh, where Purple WRT meetings are recorded and we post them online, so folks who can't be here can you know, keep track of kind of what's going on. And um, certainly, though, we're, we're glad that, that so many people are here and, and participating. Um, <clears throat> the introductions, Ultron, you, uh, the folks from Ultron, uh, you gave your introduction, so I really appreciate that. Um, Lots of good people here, and, and we have t enough people that we're not going to go do a round table, I don't think, today on, on introducing ourselves. So please feel free to ask any questions, um, and, and, um, and we're happy to, friendly group, and we're happy to have you involved. Um, update on the ADB TR069 uh, CM software integration. Uh, is, I don't think there's, is there much of an update on this, um, Luca and folks from ADB? Um, basically, we have completed what, uh, within the budget, what we said we will complete. Uh, I sent an uh, email, as a matter of fact, earlier today to Pasquale, and uh, we need to discuss the next steps, and uh, uh, I, will, uh, I will tell him what we uh, can do, and the uh, time frames, and uh, then we will see. But basically, uh, the initial step, as discussed, is completed. So, okay. that's good. All right. That sounds good. Um, anything else on this topic from someone at ADB? Maru, any comments? Maru, if you're talking, we can't hear you. Maybe his audio is not working. All right. Well, um, I, I, have, I, have a, oh. I have a quick question yeah. about the project. That's, uh, if, if I recall correctly, when I was reading about it, it was supposed to work for both ADB and for Soft at Home? Or is those two separate projects, or is it just one project? That's um, actually... And oh. Although, I was just sorry to cut you off. Uh, that's actually a really good question. There are two... There's actually three projects if, if you really want to want to look at it but um, it, there's scale which is the layer that allows you to adapt to um, any implementation of TR069 Theori um, you know it, it should with some sort of uh, you know uh, some sort of adaption layer you're going to have to have certainly based upon how it's designed um, there was some work done to move uh, soft at homes uh, integration and that um, uh, to to integrate into OpenWRT their tier 069 stack and that was uh, done in the fall um, that was never uh, didn't, it was more work than Luca had had anticipated so he wasn't able to actually integrate it into scale itself the tier 069 work from ADB that is an integration into scale um, so it is a basically a plug into scale to um, to basically integrate with the two. Is, is that a correct description, Luca, would you say? Uh, I would just uh, like to clarify the part regarding Soft at Home. Mm -hmm. So Soft at Home is not using um, OpenWRT. They yes. have a different build system and everything, while ADB is using OpenWRT. Yes. So most of the efforts with regard to uh, Soft at Home services was making um, their source code uh, compiling, working, running on OpenWRT itself. So it was um, integration work because they have different platform. So it's like, it's a different platform that they have in-house. So like you would compare RDKB with OpenWRT, completely different things. So. Um, ADB was able to deliver this, 
uh, and they have already opened WRT, so this part was not needed, and we saw that home this part was needed, so that's what we did there. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Luca. Yeah, definitely. It's a good description. Bruce, does that clarify things? Yeah, it does. Because uh, I, cause I was just kind of trying to understand why we were so much focusing on ADB, and now yes. I understand better. But, okay, awesome. Yes, makes perfect sense. Any other questions or comments on this topic? All right. Uh, moving on to the scale API improvements. I talked to Felix. He he's not he was not able to make the meeting this week. This his schedule didn't allow it. Um, the two things that that are outstanding that that people have asked for is the um, object add and remove, which he is going to add next week. He says probably by the end of the week. Um, so that, that's kind of when you can can uh, you know get a sense of that. Uh, the eventing, I, I'm, I wasn't sure if this is going to meet everyone's needs, so I wanted to, to run this by you. He said he's going to have a simple form of eventing that only covers changes made through SCAL. Is that what people are looking for, or is there, or is there some other need that's going to be, something else that's going to be needed? I think those are two most important ones at this time. Okay, so it, as written there, that as described, that makes sense to you, and that's not. Uh, there's nothing missing. This is major missing. This is a very high level. What needs to be done? Okay. So it's good. You, you can have those bullets. So it's uh, add and uh, delete uh, object and uh, events. So okay. those are the two things. He, he didn't give me a timeline on. Oh, yeah, on eventing. That's what I was going to ask. He, no, he didn't give me a timeline in the email. I, I assume it's going to come after the add and remove. Um, his contract, the, the, just as to background, the, his, the contract for the work ends at the end of February. So, I mean, he, I, he sounds like he thinks it's going to be in the next couple of weeks. He'll be, he'll have this wrapped up. So, yeah, but he didn't give me, I, he didn't give me a specific timeline. All right. Uh, are there any? He 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 said to he reiterated if there's any questions that you have about something that's going on or with Scal or any um, suggestions or anything like that, please uh, let him know or let me know, and I can pass it along to him. Just just to share with the group, uh, adding and uh, removing object. Uh, should not be that complicated, and that's what Felix uh, mentioned. Mm -hmm. While the uh, eventing events, from his point of view, require more thought. So, yeah, most likely events is going to come afterwards. Yeah, I would agree, definitely. All right. Um, if there's nothing else on SCAL, we can move on to the carrier interest group update. Um, we had obviously had a we for those who are aware we had a meeting two days ago a very uh, you know great meeting uh, just wanted to summarize kind of the updates to that <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> um, we're going to uh, publicly announce the agreement from the three chip chip makers and the low level Wi-Fi APIs um, we still have to get the, you know the exact wording and and how exactly we're going to do that. Um, but we we have enough to uh, of agreement on on that. So uh, sounds like we are going to all uh, three chip makers, the major chip makers, um, are going to have a uh, at some point move to uh, standard Linux uh, WPA supplicant and um, uh, standard Wi-Fi APIs for Linux. So that is very positive. Um, so that's the, that's the big thing there. Uh, we also talked about the software stack independent API and that's, I, we don't really, I think that's kind of the best name we came up with. It's this higher level API, the ability of software to move between, um, different stacks, whether that be from 
OpenWRT to RDK or or to uh, some custom Linux or, or something else. Uh, the ability of, you basically can make certain types of applications work uh, independent of the stack in some way so that you can, uh, I think one of the examples that has come up a lot is things like um, the ability to make your web UI actually work and set your SSID and be able to do that on different platforms. Um, that's a little bit higher level. Um, so as part of that, one of the things that we needed, uh, we kind of are, you know, in the early stages of that. We want to discuss that. But in the carrier interest group, one of the things that came up was the, the topic of what stacks should be considered. Um, clearly, you know, if it's ideally, if, if we design this API properly you, you, or, you know, agree on some sort of API that already exists, it's going to work just fine between different platforms, but there's obviously it's it's better to know what stacks we're actually considering before we uh, decide on that API because um, there's a chance we could make a decision that makes it difficult for some some particular uh, platform. Excuse me. Um, and the other thing was the use cases. We, we want to have a sense of what the use cases are. Um, the ones that uh, Bruce is, is actually kind of heading that up, but the ones that Bruce had mentioned were the topic of, uh, was uh, like web APIs or web UIs, I mean, something like that. Um, phone, you know, smartphone uh, UI, so the ability to, to do that. Uh, via your via smartphone, set the SSID, uh, you know, change password, things like that, and uh, machine to machine uh, communication for cases where you need to have multiple boxes within the same network uh, can communicate with each other. Um, so that is kind of the use cases that we had. Um, are there other like use cases that jump out to people right now that they want to mention? Um, yeah. All right. Eric, a quick yep. two point on mm -hmm. this one. Sorry. Um, so one of the things that we discussed in the care interest group was exactly as you mentioned the, the different uh, software stacks that. Uh, would be needed to be supported mm -hmm. um, and then we started to discuss the different use cases. I believe that the use cases Bruce mentioned uh, are very well uh, aligned with uh, what the operators should be looking for um, and uh, what I would uh, question after is when exactly uh, do you think that uh, something will uh, be starting? So will this be a new project? Or uh, how do you think that this will be managed? Because we can contribute, of course, with um, additional information to it. But uh, I would like also to understand uh, how exactly do you think that uh, this project or this uh, uh, agenda will be managed uh, during the future? Well, I mean, I, I think that's, that's partly up to the carrier interest group, how, how we want to move forward. Uh, the I mean, the best way mm -hmm. to to do this is is if we have um, a particular member that really wants to push it forward. I mean that's that's going to be the best way to to do that. But um, okay, yeah, definitely that is going to be the the most effective way. Um, but it, I'm I'm really open to ideas. If 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 we want to start looking at at like particular, you know, these are the areas that we're going to look at. Then I I am and then we need to. We need to actually get some people that, to work through the API. I, I mean, I think that's a pretty reasonable way of doing it. But I mean, if, if we already have something to work with, then then we're good. Um, I did do uh, what one one thing notable I was going to mention. I didn't put on on the slides, but I did something I did do yesterday is I looked at the um, the uh, API that RDKB uses for um, uh, controlling Wi-Fi uh, from uh, I think it's kind of like supposed to be a higher level API. It seems like it goes mm -hmm. through, I think, Dbus. Um, and it looks yeah. like it uses uh, something along the lines of TR-181. So 
that yes, it needs the protocol they use. Yes. So okay. So then I I did understand it properly. So that that seems like TR one eighty one may be a uh, kind of a a good first thing to look at because that might be mm -hmm. might get us most of the way there. I don't know. Um. So. So one of one of the things that um, if you look at the different uh, platforms, so RGKB and Open Liberty itself, uh, what you will see is that uh, both the two architectures are not that different. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. So you have on one side the UBUS being used on the Open RT, uh, but uh, I can't be very sure that uh, also RDKV, they are looking into UBUS too. So this would be interesting uh, um, to understand uh, if different members from RDK uh, would be present in these meetings, probably they could add additional information to it. Uh, but uh, I'm sure that if we are capable to work together, we will find ways to have a common uh, API at least. Because the way things are exposed uh, in the bus system and the way the different managers get access to, to this uh, system to communicate with the different interfaces, I would say that uh, I, I'm really sure that we will find a way to, to make this work. Good. Yeah. No. But I, I understand yeah. also your point that uh, we need to have someone uh, asking. So the point is clear. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Anything we can. We uh, the more en energy we have from from members, the 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 clearly uh, the more um, the the easier this is to do, and uh, be, and the more participation because we are very much a community. So yeah. Definitely. But I, I mean, I, th I think that this is that that our first steps we're doing right now are very reasonable, and the more um, the more participation we get, the the better our results going to be. Um, one other thing that came up was was people were asking the to get to discuss what people's sense of RDKB is, what what they're doing in it right now, um, what what their opinions are, kind of get a sense of, uh, a lot of people are talking a lot about RDKB, um, certainly something's happening, so the question would be what is, what do people know and what can we share at the carrier interest group to, to help all of us understand the, the, the whole um, system better. Um, I, RDKB uh, is, it's kind of hard to understand the the whole system. I think just based upon the limited amount I've looked at it. Um, so I think it's it's better to have people understand uh, as many people involved to share their opinions, their observations, things along those lines. So we're going to start a thread in the carrier interest group on that too. Uh, any other comments on either of these topics that that folks had? Questions. All right. Um, we'll move on then. Uh, Open WRT Summit. Uh, the there's a meeting. No, that it kind of looks like I'm announcing that the Open WRT Summit is next week. That is not what I'm announcing. Uh, we're going to have a meeting next week of the of the committee. Uh, it is uh, so it's at 7 a.m. Pacific time uh, on February 8th. Um, so we'll we'll talk a little bit about how we can uh, split up planning for the for the summit this year. Any other comments on that? There's there's not much else to it, I don't think. All right. Um, we actually have two uh, slides because we've so much stuff. Can I can I go back to the RDKB stuff? Yeah. Um, really quickly, is that an open source community or what kind of community is that? Uh, I mean, is it something that you need to have the the um, does Purple need to have a liaison with them, or the, is it individual members that, if you want to find out more about the RDKB? I think, I mean, RDKB is open source. Um, it, they, um, they have members at the organization. Some of the documentation is available publicly. Some of it is you have to be a member. Um, it's, they're a little bit different from a lot of open source communities I've seen in the past. That's not. There's nothing necessarily wrong with the way they do it. It's just different than a lot of open source communities. Um, 
Art, I know you, you have you have you talked a bit with the RDK folks? I, I don't I don't know. Uh, no, it was uh, through Voitech. Voitech. So Voitech had the conversations. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Voitech has has talked a little bit about them, um, but a, a number of our members are already in RDK. The RDK, uh, whatever I, I don't remember the name of their group. It's RDK Central or something. Uh, their membership organization, and they uh, have access to a lot of that stuff. But Purple currently is not a member. Um, I mean, maybe we could become one. I don't know. So yeah, I mean, part of it is is Bruce's. Th part of this is to this thread would be to to get these things down. Like, w what are the questions we don't understand? Because RDKB c clearly has a lot of momentum. Um, it's very much focused in. They've got a lot of members. Uh, how much activity is happening? Is it seems like a lot. But it's how do how what do we need to know and what don't we understand and how how can we better uh, figure out how to collaborate if possible and and find the common ground because I'm sure there as uh, Pedro said there is clearly some some common ground here. And okay. if you allow me to add, Eric, also so the point is that our DKB. Um, has been very strong in the cable world, meaning mm -hmm. DOCSIS. Um, however, uh, they're starting to enter also in the European market. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is something that is uh, starting to be no longer connected only to the DOCSIS world, but also to the DSL and cyberspace. And uh, this is why uh, I also suggested in the past that it would be interesting to have uh, additional discussion with the different members that are part of this group who in fact also are RDKB members and uh, for sure that at least some of the public information uh, can be shared uh, within the group and uh, for sure that we can work together in order to to find a way to get this common alignment. Mm -hmm. I think that makes sense. Bruce, were you going to say something? No, I just want to. Uh, I I think that you you answered my question. Oh, okay, awesome. All right. Um, hey, Eric. Yeah. Eric, this is Chase. Just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. uh, open uh, really to to the input uh, feedback from from the group. But perhaps we could have a thirty minutes uh, session in one of the next calls, and have someone uh, just drive a high level uh, parallel in between RDK, uh, TR69, or whatever you want to put there, just to give a bit of context, and perhaps do the same with uh, DBus compared to UBus. Uh, this is coming up over and over again. Perhaps it's something of general interest for the people in this group. It's just a suggestion. Uh, perhaps uh, 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 Pasquale is involved on the RDK side as well, might have a little bit more information. Or Someone else, Luca. I don't know. What? I'm sorry, I didn't hear uh, you very well. Uh, you didn't hear the old, the old. Can you hear me? Yes. Now, now I can. If you can just repeat the question, please. Yeah. So briefly, uh, I was suggesting if there is interest, and it looks like there is interest, uh, someone who takes the lead here and presents a 30-minute session in one of the next calls to uh, present a parallel to drive a comparison in between uh, existing uh, protocols around this area and eventually to add the same kind of uh, analysis comparison uh, in between UBUS and DBUS. Uh -huh. um, uh, UBUS and DBUS would be... Um, hmm. It's a suggestion. Uh, uh -huh, no, no. Uh, it, it's, it's, if, uh, if people believe it's important, because it's coming up over and over again, right? So the, yes, no. the sixth time I hear this, right? So perhaps just to uh, uh, couple of slides, the kind of style of presentation that, that I've seen many times at the OpenWRT Summit. Short mm. to the point, technical, here are the things that you need to know, and so forth. The just a suggestion. As a matter of fact, I think uh, Felix mm, did talk about this once in the past, 
when he presented the OpenWRT ecosystem on CCC. So, and as he's the author, maybe it's best that he also is engaged in this. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, I know he's not on the call now, but it makes sense to, to do it together. I, I mean, I, I would agree, I would agree with that. The the U bus D bus one um, probably is a little more straight. We probably have a lot more expertise. I would comparing RDK and OpenWRT sounds really big, and I I don't know. We would have to find somebody who understands them both in the group. Yeah, as for the RDKB and OpenWRT comparison. Mm. If you remember, I, I wanted to do this as a project, and uh, I sent out the proposal. So yes, um, yeah, it's just not, to, it's just, not a trivial just to, task. Yeah, yeah, but just, just to clarify, so it's not R D B K key. Sorry, uh, compared to the whole Open W R T, it's just on the management side. I think where the interest is, is and the conversation is right. So whether it's T R sixty nine or something else, Luca, you are the expert. But looks like the American side is coming up with something different. Uh, so perhaps high level, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, just to give a sense. Um, is it possible that we keep all of this on the list and then uh, read some links? Because I, I, it's not a problem to do something. I just want to uh, read up before you know saying something uh, uh, wrong, <laughs> basically. yeah. But it's not a problem for uh, to be a part of this, uh, you know, discussions and others. All right. I what I, the other thing we'll do is we'll we'll talk. Um, the the U bus and D bus one I think is pretty feasible. Um, the other parts we'll just have to find the right person I think. Um, but I will I will look into that. I I think that that with Soft at Home being a member and. I, I think ADB is also a member of, of RDKB uh, or involved in it, so I think we could probably talk to them. Um, Pedro, are, are, those are those are exactly the companies I was thinking yeah, of. Yes, definitely. Pedro, sorry, Eric. Oh, I was just going to ask. Like, do you do you have something that kind of compares the architecture of RDK and OpenWRT, um, even any parts of it? That could be, uh, you know, presented. Uh, I can uh, I can try to see uh, what can be used. Yes, Eric. Okay. Um, if you also allow me the suggestion, um, mm -hmm. as I mentioned before, so not only I think that ADB and Software Home could be um, a very good uh, uh, added value to this discussion. Uh, but if possible, also to extend to the other uh, companies who I'm sure are very deeply involved on it, Absolutely. which is uh, Aries and also Technicolor. Because uh, as you, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but uh, the RDK itself, uh, it was started from the, the Cisco uh, software solution, which was then acquired by Technicolor, and this is public information. Um, so all the RDKP topic became uh, started with them. So it would be interesting for sure to have them in the call, considering that uh, they are also part of this uh, group. That's a great idea, idea. Uh, Pedro. That's a, that's a great idea. Uh, Eric, you are the man eventually to reach out to them because they are not formally members of Purple mm -hmm. yet. Oh, oh, hang on a sec. No, uh, Eris is. So Ian Willock um, actually had planned to sit in on the call, he's an individual member of Purple, and they're considering their official membership. But um, is Ian on this call? He was going to try to sit in, but I'm not sure if his calendar allowed. No, I, I don't. I don't think so. Unfortunately. Okay, but anyway. But uh, he, Art and uh, if you allow me, Ian would be the best person. Great. Great. It's fantastic. Awesome. We. Will, I'll definitely add him to that too. Yeah, we'll kind of go through that. Awesome. Thank you very much, Pedro. And I will, I will also reach out to Technicolor. All right. Anything else on, on that topic? All right. Uh, moving on, the data models and OpenWRT. 
Um, this was kind of this is kind of a side of the of this higher level API, the you know software stack independent API, whatever we want to call it. Uh, the question of how do we, you actually uh, easily uh, handle data models and open WRT. I know that Inteno, uh, uh, Sucre, I think you reached out to Felix. Um, has, has there been more discussion on, on how understanding if Scal is, is a feasible way to, to handle what you're trying to do or, if, or, or anything along those lines? Uh, hi. Hi there. Uh, yeah, we have been investigating uh, Scal also asking some questions to Felix. Uh, but to me, after the last uh, CIG meeting on Tuesday, uh, to me actually this our proposal for data models on OpenWRT and since we propose having a common API uh, on the bus, which is in OpenWRT's U bus, which could be in RDKBD bus or same bus on both systems, to me, this uh, links close, very close to the uh, high-level API discussion on that's going on CIG. Uh, that's why uh, now when we consider that kind of level, which uh, and also we know that uh, it's uh, SOC vendors also want to probably come up with an API that will uh, fulfill the requirements from the. Uh, operators, so definitely an API is needed now, as we know. And two, I we still think that the best uh, translation layer for that is the bus. And Scal is also doing uh, probably the same, uh, mm -hmm. uh, moving the API data model to bus. But uh, as we now, uh, we start thinking a bit more uh, in details how uh, also this API proposal that we have in mind could uh, SOC vendors having a common, uh, I'd say, let's say, common wireless object, common switch object, common DSL object uh, together on the bus. We are uh, more thinking towards that, and this makes it us to think a bit more detailed if this skull is covering some more cases. L let's say, in some cases, it could be required the application to application communication. Let's say, wireless object and Ethernet object needs to communicate for collecting some information from each other. Let's say if switch event has happened, wireless object or wireless application needs to act on it. So uh, thinking of it, we have to do more investigation and maybe uh, discuss more with Luca and Felix. Uh, I started seeing, we started let's say, seeing this data model discussion we opened up is a quite good fit for uh, CIG uh, CIG's high level API. Uh, but we are trying to somehow fulfill the same need here. I don't know if you would agree, but that's how we see it now. So it, it requires a bit more investigation ever to at least to be able to make a, a solution that will address both, both uh, how the SOC vendors can have a common API on the high level in a way that uh, will fulfill the requirements from the operators. And we, on our system, we, as we said, we heavily use UBUS, and we have objects that are wireless switch DSL works on multiple platforms, and we already have a GUI built on top of it, mm -hmm. and the RSNet client uh, built on, on top of it, and also application to application, or device to device communication that's using these objects, let's say extender uh, repeater solutions. So we have uh, some, uh, we have, uh, as I said, Thinking of all these considerations and things that we are able to achieve now, uh, we can uh, investigate Scal a bit more and discuss with uh, Felix and Luca and see if actually Scal is able to will be able to manage those things as well. If not, what can we do as to get the community that is, uh, uh, includes all the vendors, uh, operators, and also SOC vendors? But to me, as I said again, uh, now this high-level API I think. It ties very close to the CIG's high-level API discussions. So I think it will take a couple more weeks to be able to come to a point about this. Okay. That th I mean, thank you for that update. I, I think that, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not d digging into the details. Based upon what I've seen in scale, I think it seems like it's got a lot of potential. But, yeah, I mean, you're going to know better than I would. Um, just to understand all the, all the nuances and things. Um, but, yeah, 
Yeah, no, I, I think that, that this fits very well with that this, this high-level API discussion from, from the, the CIG. Uh, any other discussion on, on this topic about how you know, handling data models in, in OpenWRT in a general sense? All right, uh, board farm updates. Uh, not a lot uh, from my end. Um, I, uh, you know, I was looking at the Jenkins server and it had apparently crashed in the last few weeks, so I had to had to reset it. But uh, that was that, that's the main thing from my end. Um, uh, anything from anyone else? Any questions about board farm? Anything along those lines? All right, uh, quiet on that front. Uh, I, I did email Pedro first to answer his questions he had about board farm, so we're, we'd be happy to uh, mm -hmm. to to help in any way we can and get more people involved in the community. Um, so it's a, it's a cool yeah. project. Eric, yeah. uh, since you were talking about this, so uh, um, first of all, thank you for sharing the, the information. I think it's uh, important, at least for me, to be aware about uh, how this uh, uh, project is being managed. Mm -hmm. Also, to my understanding, uh, I think that there are many companies involved on it, right? So this is something that I believe even Cesar is somehow involved uh, on new developments. Um, but uh, what I would like to, to know is if there are other members, uh, other companies involved in the, the purple who are also contributing to something or how this is exactly being managed. Uh Board Farm, uh, we've had uh, certainly Qualcomm's the leader in this one. They've mm -hmm. they've had right. the, obviously they they wrote it. Um, the, the I there haven't been a whole uh, a lot of contributions from companies. There's been there's been a, a, some use from uh, imagination. I mean they use it for all of their creator stuff and all their automated testing. Um, there's been outside contributions from um, uh, CZNIC. Uh, they're not a member, but they've been very active in the OpenWRT community. Um, and there's been a Lantique has has or Intel has contributed um, at boards in the past uh, to make that accessible, and uh, Qualcomm's contributed boards. So I, I think there's a I think there's a lot of um, a lot of interest in it. Um, it it's uh, I think we we can certainly you know would love to do have more people involved and and that but I think it's a it's got a, it's got a ton of potential and we've already seen some of it so I think maybe um, okay. I, I won't be on the call for the open liberty summit planning because mm -hmm. I'll be gone next week but maybe uh, put in the back of your head to put on the agenda uh, the idea of a board farm workshop or hackathon type of thing yes I agree that is a really good idea Definitely. Yeah, because um, thank you, Katy, for also for your comment. Because uh, uh, what I really would like to understand is uh, thinking on an operator side. How can uh, board farm be used, right? So what are the real use cases that are available as of today, and what would be needed to be improved? So the first thing is I would say is that we would need to share the requirements we have, right? This yeah, would help definitely. to contribute to it. Uh, but um, again, so it was a very open question to better understand if it is indeed being, uh, there is someone involved on it and there is contribution to it, or if um, somehow it has been stopped for a while. But uh, again, thanks for the information, both of you. I mean, it, yeah, it's, I, oh, go Kathy. Yeah. I was just saying the ideal situation is that we have a whole variety of hardware that is being tested against both trunk and the last stable release, you know, just constantly, daily. Yes, and that's, I mean, that's yeah, what yeah. Qualcomm does internally. Yeah, and, 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 and Kathy, and, and, and I come back to my uh, idea uh, from the security side, it would also be great to add some sort of a high-level penetration testing automated so that uh, as a result you don't just know that OpenWRT is running, but also that that specific implementation is somehow secure, in mm -hmm. quotes, and we, we can define all of that. I've been working with, with another open source project out there that uh, led by some of the leading universities in the U.S. They have done some work there as well. So there, there, is, there, there is an opportunity to extend and get even closer to uh, 
what was the, the promised land of that purple stamp, if you remember the area, mm -hmm. which is a bit of a certification, not just of compliance with open but also security. So open open to help, happy to help in any way I can on this side as well. Absolutely. I think I think the penetration testing is a, it's, it's a perfect type of set of tests that we should add. Um, and just to clarify a bit, it's not the traditional penetration testing that you do uh, through networks. It's also penetration testing done on the firmware image itself that in this case runs in an emulator. So it's a combination of both static and dynamic, but I think what's, what's the value that we can add here is that the image itself is tested even before before it gets into the device, as far as security is concerned. Interesting. I'll have to, I'll have to learn more about that. Yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really cool stuff. It's really cutting edge. Of, yeah, yes. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah, Pedro, if you have any, any additional, if you have additional questions or, or want to understand, you know, how do you add new boards to it? How do you, um, how do you uh, add tests? Please let me know, and either I can answer it or I can find the person who knows even better than I do. Perfect. Thank you, Eric. Awesome. Yep, no problem. Uh, funding OpenWRT projects. That's the the same as last week. We we were you know we kind of decided we want to kind of wrap up the ones we have before we move on and make sure that they're they're really solid before we we move on to the to the next ones. Uh, regulatory update. Uh, just uh, not a ton. Uh, <coughs> unsurprisingly, it's still very. Um, fluid at the FCC with the new administration, so uh, we uh, I'm waiting on the person who headed the subgroup. Uh, they were going to meet with some of the members of the FCC uh, staff, and you know, I think it was today they were actually going to meet um, and to kind of just see what next steps are and what the FCC feels comfortable doing. Uh, you know, it's probably not going to be the cl clearest right today, but we'll. Uh, I think they're kind of firming up their plans going forward, so not a lot there. Any other topics that anyone wants to discuss? Hey, Eric, I just wanted to share with, with the people in the call a quick update. Uh, we are working at the first uh, uh, Purple Foundation uh, conference, mm -hmm. and so as of now, we have, uh, as you know, a lot of ideas and things uh, 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 undefined, but looks like at least the date it's, it's, it's a solid, and that should be May 15. So if you plan to be in the San Francisco Bay Area May 15, that is going to be an event likely at the Berkeley campus. It's going to be the first Purple Foundation All Ends uh, Summit, and very likely in cooperation with IOTSF. Um, you may also consider that May 16, 18, that is one of the leading IoT conferences going on in Santa Clara. That's IoT World, ran by Informa. So just put on your calendar May 15, and we'll share more details when, when we get more. Absolutely. Thank you, Cesare. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's a, I, I completely slipped my mind. That is that is is coming up, and we have made some some progress on that. So yeah, definitely. Uh, put that on your calendar. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you can make it. We're going to talk about the plans, kind of just to talk about everything purple, to update everybody in all the groups, and also to uh, collaborate and figure out a way, you know, to you know increase our participation and you know in, increase the momentum and keep it going and you know all those things. So, a uh, lot of the I think there's going to be a lot of feel from the Open WRT Summit, kind of that that style, but we're we're still working out the details. So if you enjoy the OpenWT Summit, I think you're going to enjoy this one. All right. Any other comments or questions or topics? All right. Well, uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you again next week. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Thank you all. Bye. 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 Bye.